Hey, what's up? This is 50 Cent, and you're watching Attack of the Show on G4. Keep it locked right here. Hey, what's up? This is Kevin Pereira. You don't give a shit, do you? All right, cool. <laughs> to you live from the DISH stage in Las Vegas, isn't that right, Kevin? Am I, am I on? Is it my time? Your hey! Time. Thanks for that uproarious applause back there because it is dead here. Absolutely dead behind me. Uh, I'm at the Consumer Electronics Show still. Hello, I'm surrounded by radiation and blinking plasmas. Kevin? Yes. Yes, Candace yes. Bailey. How does the convention floor look? Uh, the floor? Uh, it's great. It's great. It's uh, covered in debris, but it's pretty much the same as yesterday. It's starting to get swampy out here. I'm not going to lie. Things are just warmer and, in general, crop dustier. Oh. But, hey, there's still really, really cool electronics everywhere you look. Are you sure you're not the crop duster? No, I'm, I've been the dust D. I've been on the receiving <laughs> end of that one. It's like okay. it's just walking into a wall of hate. Like, oh, a 3D display. Oh, that was 4D. <laughs> that was an extra, uh, an extra dimension of this booth that I did not need to experience. <laughs> Kevin, Kevin, there's some some news swirling around here that you found an awesome new iPad dock. Is this true? Oh, that G4 rumor mill. Those exciting rumors. <laughs> you know it. About I heard you found a dock. Yeah, <laughs> I did really actually. Cool, um, minutes before the show. Minutes before the show, the, the guys from iHome came by the booth and said, hey, you guys should check this out. And we actually liked it enough. We, we decided to throw it on air. It's right here. This is the iHome IDM5. And it's a Bluetooth keyboard setup and wireless speaker system. So right here, it looks like a, like a Casio keyboard. You expect you to lift this up and have some keys. You do. It's actually a full keyboard, though. So when you pop it open, you can then take your tablet or your smartphone or iDevice or whatever you want, dock it right there, and it turns your portable device into a full-fledged desktop-style machine. So you can Bluetooth pair. It's got USB ports on the side if you want to connect it to charge. It's actually got a microphone built in, so if you get a call while you're using your device, you can press a button and take that call. Dedicated controls for listening to audio, raising the volume. It's iHome, so it's got two big speakers. It sounds really, really good. And they, thought, they really thought of everything. There's even a dedicated button to hide or reveal the on-screen keyboard for, like, the iPad or the iPhone. So in case it pops up, you just tap that and start typing away. It's going to be out in May for 129 bucks. It's from iHome. It's just one of the tiny little things that we saw here today that was cool. But everybody's been tweeting me and emailing me and saying, hey, uh, first of all, thanks for the photos of Candace's boobs and Sarah's butts, which if you haven't seen, I just tweeted them. So thank you, ladies, for that. But aside from that, they've all been asking, what is with the Ultrabook? Where's the Ultrabook? Is it a Voltron-esque machine of netbooks that got together to crush Godzilla? It's not. It sounds like that's what an Ultrabook is. It's actually a specification from Intel on a new line of laptops. So they're calling them Ultrabooks. It has to do with battery life and the size and what processor they use. But this is HP's Ultrabook, or one of them. This is the HP Envy Spectre. And this is the sort of higher end of their Ultrabooks right here. It's 20 millimeters thick. It weighs four pounds. It's a little on the heavy side. But the reason it's so hefty is that it's actually solid glass. So this case right here, solid glass on the front. Imagine a, a giant iPad that you can't touch or turn on, but that's the back of it. Glass on the front, glass where your wrists will rest. I mean, invest heavily in Windex if you're going to grab one of these guys. You got nine hours of battery life, a 256 gig solid state hard drive. It even supports a second solid state drive if you need extra storage as well. It comes with Beats by Dre. So yes, they shrink. Mini Dr. Dre is in here equalizing all of your music. There's a volume rocker on the side. It's dedicated. You can press it in, and that will give you access to 3D sound or customized equalizers. So the sound is really good on this thing. It also comes preloaded with uh, Adobe Premiere Elements and Photoshop Elements, which are lighter versions of the full-featured software. But that means out of the box, you can create terrible multimedia presentations if you like. That's supported right there. 1400 bucks for the uh, HP uh, NV Spectre. Again, it's HP's Ultrabook. It's pretty sweet. It's coming out in the spring. So again, those are just two devices, very diverse. That's what I've been seeing as I've been running around. But Jessica Chobot is also on the floor. She's running around like crazy. So you should probably indulge her and give her a few minutes of your time right now.
pageant about to take over your life, it is probably here at CES, just like LG's Cinema 3D. Dude, it's so awesome. You gotta check this out. Yeah, put on the glasses. with Toshiba's glasses-free 3D TV. It is pretty damn awesome. It's 4K by 2K. That means it's four times 1080p, which means it has eight million pixels inside of it. That is awesome because it actually up converts anything that you're watching, even if you're not watching 4K content. So when you switch to 3D, the thing with the 4K is it actually locks you into 720p HD for up to nine people. And the way you can figure out where to sit so you get the best 3D experience is up at the top here, you'll see that there's green circles with arrows in them that tells you where to sit and where you should be located to get the best 3D experience. Unfortunately, we don't have a price, but it is coming out late 2012, so get rid of these and kick back and relax. Well, a couple arguing over TV rights. Sound familiar? Well, Dish is looking to make America divorce-free with the Hopper. And I've got Nick here to tell me all about it. So the Hopper is a whole home DVR that allows our customers to watch live or recorded television on up to four televisions using a single Hopper. The Hopper comes included with Blockbuster at home. It's $10 a month, and it gives you instant streaming access to 10,000 titles, movies and TV shows. Hopper comes with this great feature called Prime Time Anytime. The Hopper will automatically record all Prime Time shows during Prime Time hours, so you don't need to remember to set your DVR. It'll store that content for eight days. So you said it can store gazillions and gazillions of movies and shows. What does a gazillions actually equate to? 2,000 hours of content can be stored two terabyte hard drive. When's it available and how much does it cost? It'll be available before April 1st, okay. and we're not disclosing pricing. I'm at the Sony Tower. Behold, the Sony Tablet P. I have the power! Awesome clamshell design under a pound. It has two 5.5 inch screens. It also has an e-reader built in. The problem with that though is the surface is still very, very shiny. So don't throw away those Kindles just yet. Also running on Google Android Honeycomb OS system. It has a micro USB and a micro SD. It has roughly about an eight hour battery life. Unfortunately for us, it hasn't been announced for release yet or how much it costs. Small, compact, totally love it. Only complaint that I would make is, Sony, where's the little dingle bopper that I can put my Japanese charms through? I miss those guys. I've been collecting them for 10 years. You broke my heart, but I still love you. Oh, look at me. I'm so professional. I have a briefcase. Ha ha, just kidding. I'm not professional at all. This is a TV site. This is the Aquos Freestyle. It's an LED TV flat screen. This one is 20 inches, but it ranges up to 60 inches. They're super, super light. The 20 inch only weighs about five pounds, but the 60 inch is still light enough that one person can easily mount it on their wall. It has built-in wireless. It's running at 1080p. It also has built-in Wi-Fi and a rechargeable battery. It does have an HDMI input, so you can go ahead and attach your peripherals, or if you want to just wander around your house, you can watch HD video through the Wi-Fi directly to the TV within a 90-foot range. Unfortunately, no price has been announced and we don't know when it's available, but this thing is, well, I'm just gonna say it, it's hot. CES 2012 making strides to not disappoint. You know, guys, I can tell how many years I've been coming to CES based on how big the LED TVs have gotten over the years. It's like counting the rings of a tree stump. Oh, I remember when I had to get up off the couch and change you, and it totally sucks. Thanks, guys. Go ahead. We'll check out more of the sexy gadgets at CES. And we will have a very cute dog doing something not so cute in Around the Net. Plus, Fernanda Andrade, star of the suit. Attack of the Show's coverage of CES 2012 is brought to you by Gamefly.com. Games delivered to your door and PC.
tribute to the year 1986 with a series of fake retro TV intros. This one is our favorite, and not just because the super awesome Ray Wise is in it. <laughs> this is Chauncey McKnight, a decorated police officer and championship roller skater, until he got too close to criminal mastermind Abraxas. How are your feet, Chauncey? Didn't you get the memo? I don't have any feet! I'm here to give you another chance to skate. I've never seen skates like that before. We call them blades. With the night blades permanently grabbed into his legs, Chauncey is now capable of incredible speeds up to 300 miles per hour and immense firepower. Rollerblades look cool, almost. No, no, it didn't. Nothing, <laughs> nothing makes rollerblades cool. I mean, though it, the video did capture how I want to shoot rollerbladers with lasers. <laughs> or a gun. Or my car. Any... <laughs> Kevin's a rollerblader, isn't he? Is he? Well, yeah. even more reason. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Kevin. <laughs> uh, today's number four item is... Well, you know, we actually don't know what it is. Yeah, it looks like a fake ad for a boomerang-shaped pizza in, in Italian. Now, at this point, you're probably asking yourself, why would anyone want a boomerang-shaped pizza? <laughs> well, hold on, because you're going to have a lot more questions after you watch this. pizza shaped like a boomerang it had so many uses. Yeah, right? totally. That or that Fabio's brother lived on the moon. <laughs> That's news. That's true. <laughs> so hopefully airing this video means we can get educational grant money. Yeah. That's horrible. <laughs> I think they died. Today's number three is a bummer from the best Fabricated news around the Onion News Network. The Onion News Network! Woo! I love them! They're fake news, y'all. Oh. Recently, Beyonce and Jay-Z were blessed with the birth of a healthy baby daughter. Unfortunately, an old agreement of Beyonce's kicked into effect. Beyonce fans around the world were thrilled when the multi-platinum singer gave birth to a healthy baby girl earlier this week. But that excitement quickly turned to shock when the witch who granted Beyonce her perfect singing voice 15 years ago <laughs> appeared in a cloud of smoke and demanded the star's firstborn child. Well, when Beyonce was a young girl, she met a magical witch named Grisora in the woods while gathering berries. And Grisora told Beyonce that she would make her sing with the unmatched beauty of a thousand nightingales in return for her firstborn child. Unbeknownst to Beyonce, she's actually been keeping tabs on the singer, as evidenced in this photo. Mm. Apparently, she was even in the front row at the VMAs, very hard to get seats, mm. when Beyonce revealed her baby bump. So obviously, the second that baby came out into the world, mm. Grisora was right there to snatch it out of Beyonce's mm. arm, saying, quote, I have come for what is mine. Mm. Give me the babe. Also, we saw it when Christina Ricci asked a wizard to make her skinny, but the catch was he could make her head as big as he wanted. <laughs> inevitable and horrible singing career. Yay! And rappering and acting careers. 
Now, there's nothing that will get you in the mood faster than the sultry sounds of Marvin Gaye's classic ode to lovemaking. Let's get it on. Yeah. Even when you're alone. <laughs> Too much class to say that that dog was burying his bone. <laughs> too much class. True, that's true. But hey, if there's grass on the field, play ball! <laughs> <laughs> oh, today's number one item is an ad for beer made with footage from one of America's most disturbing movies, Blue Velvet. David Lynch's Love Letter to Laughing Gas features one of the film's most insane performances from Dennis Hopper. And he has a few things to say about his preferred brand of alcoholic beverage. What kind of beer do you like? Heineken. Heineken? <laughs> that <laughs> Pabst Blue Ribbon! I've got Pabst Blue Ribbon on my mind. Dennis Hopper include Harley Davidson motorcycles and Chef's Pal carving knives. Wait, yeah. did, didn't he also? <sighs> oh, 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 yeah, but he wasn't that picky brand wise. Oh, okay, got it. Hey, Candace. Uh huh. Do you know what today is the anniversary of? Well, yes, I do know. Oh. On this day in the year 630, Muhammad conquered Mecca with an army of 10,000. Everyone knows that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. True. Yeah. Um, but also, it's your one-year anniversary hosting a tag of the show! to be here, but to make up for missing it, he made a very special video for you. Aww. Wait, should I be worried? Oh, yeah, probably. <laughs> hey, Candace Bailey, it's me, your co-host, co-host of a year, Kevin Pereira. Uh, I wanted to congratulate you on an amazing year. Unfortunately, I can't be there to do it in person. I'm at the Consumer Electronics Show in Vegas, but that doesn't mean I can't show you how much I care, which is why I've spent the last few weeks in front of iMovie slicing up your greatest moments and in just a year, which is a relatively short time, there's been so many amazing times. So I hope you enjoy watching this as much as I enjoyed making it. How can it be so hard to set free? Epidemics team has fallen a long way. Go oh, or uh, play <laughs> What am I reading right now? <laughs> we never got the day. Friends I'm laughing. 
Oh, you were laughing? You weren't yeah. touched by that? Oh, I was very touched. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've actually got a few more friends of the show with a special gift for you. And really? you can eat it. Oh, I can eat yeah! it! Yeah! Bring it out, bring it out, guys! Yeah! during the breaks, haha, <laughs> -ha, they are great. Yeah. No, that was professionally choreographed. <laughs> no, actually, I just started <laughs> air humping, and I said, Candace, let's do this in sync. And she said, sure. I'm always up for a good air great. hump. Yeah. 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 I don't know why I'm the only one doing it right now, I'm but sorry. I guess we can continue. Um, for that last tweet, we're giving you a one-year membership to Gamefly. Yeah. 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 Now, if you want to be a part of the show and end up on our Twitter wall, tweet us at AOTS and use the hashtag AOTS. That's right. <laughs> and guess what? Kevin's back. Hey, come on. Oh, this oh, time he's being oh. presented by Gamefly. <laughs> we are very off. Cool. <laughs> hey, Cal. Hello. I can tell the ladies miss me because they've been reduced to humping the air. I'm sorry. I'll bring my thighs back shortly. Um, as you guys know, I... I am a huge fanboy of the Google TV. I, I love it. I, I sing its praises nightly. Uh, and that's why I wanted to show you the latest box. Sony and Google have made sweet, sweet love. That's a quad scissor, I think. Um, I, you do the math. This is the Sony NSZ GS7. Boy, does that name roll off the tongue if you're a robot. Um, it delivers all of the Google TV content that you want in a nice, sleek box. This little device will fit in nicely in your entertainment center, uh, and it is a powerful, powerful device. What I love about Google TV is that it's an in-between. It sits between your cable box and your television so that when you want to use the Google TV features like browsing the web or loading an application or even searching your program guide, you don't have to bounce away from your cable box to do that. Uh, but the real, real star here is not the picture-in-picture. -picture, it's not the sleek form factor. It's not the USB ports. It's this. It's Sony's exclusive remote for Google TV. This is the front of it here. Traditional Google TV macro buttons down below. Multi-touch trackpad here that supports gestures on the side. Quick and easy channel and volume buttons. Quick mute there. Spin it around to the belly. Oh, look at that bad boy. Full QWERTY keyboard. Take your time. Drool over it. Get pregnant by it's awesome. It's all right there. Uh, function buttons right for DVR functionality. And, and, uh, and it's also got built-in microphone. So you can press a button and use your voice to search for your favorite rom-coms. Mm, failure to launch, please. Record it always. It'll actually do it. Uh, and the other cool thing is that it's got three axis controls. So think of it like a, almost like a Wiimote. So you can actually use the built-in gyros to select things with a cursor. It's all there. No release date or price, but it'll probably be out this year. And if history's our guide, a couple hundred bucks. Don't quote me on that one. Quote Sony at some point. Uh, next. You got to talk about tablets if you're talking about CES, and the reason we're yapping about this one is that it's the thinnest, lightest tablet uh, out there. I mean, this is the at least the thinnest one. It's the Toshiba Excite X10, 0.3 inches thick. Let me show you this from the side there. 
almost disappears. 1.8 pounds. Of course, it's got an auto brightness feature, so it'll adjust the brightness of the screen depending upon the uh, ambient light around you. It's got dual HD cameras. So on the back, you got a five megapixel camera, perfect for some high def stills. On the front, two megapixel camera, so the chat room letters can see your Grundle in perfect high definition. It's available mid quarter one for 529. That comes with 16 gigs of storage. You can also spend 599 and get it with 32 gigs of storage. So an extra 70 bucks for the extra storage is pretty nice. It's also micro SD compatible, so you can upgrade it. Lots of stuff to love here. Very fast Texas instrument processor. Again, that's the Toshiba Excite X10. And if you're looking for a tablet, look no further. This one's really nice. Back to you, crazy kids in the studio. Yeah. 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 Oh, no, no, you got a cake. Whatever. Celebrate it. I got a camel toe cake. What? What? <laughs> Coming up Delicious. later, Jessica Choba gets her hands on the PSP Vita. Her hands and maybe even her tongue. Stay tuned, Fernanda Andrade from the Dollar Side. We'll be inside the studio live. <laughs> if you're hot. Or at least that's what movies lead us to believe. <laughs> Maria, I'm your daughter. Connect the cuts. Connect the cuts, connect the cuts. Connect the cuts, connect the cuts. Do you know how to connect the cuts? Connect the cuts. Did you do that to yourself? From doing shows like Fallen, but how does your life change when you're suddenly the the lead of the biggest film of the year? Um, well, it just happened, so not very much. <laughs> it just happened, but I mean, come yeah, on, it's so I huge. get to come here. What is it, like 35 million? 35 million, or 35 million yeah. That's huge, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> Anything else? Um, no, I get to come here and talk to you. <laughs> yes, we love it. No. Do you personally believe that people can be obs uh, obsessed, <laughs> possessed? <Yes. laughs> um, I think it depends on the space that you kind of operate. You know, I think to those people that have those experiences, they're very real. But um, since I don't really abide there, I don't really. You don't get think to. it could be real? Now, when you were filming it, um, did it feel real? Yeah. Were absolutely. you scared out of your mind? Because I can imagine just being you. you acted so well in it, but I can imagine just being in that place and being like, oh my god, what's going on right now? I would be yeah. freaked out just being there. Yeah, no, we was shot in really, it was, we shot in really spooky places. Bucharest is a dark, cold place. We never saw the sun, so it, all of that helped, you know. Yeah. But um, do I believe in it? I think it, I think um, it's all a matter of, of exactly that. Yeah. Yeah. Now, are people coming up to you with their own supernatural stories? Yeah, actually, right after I, I finished bet. the movie. Yeah, after right after I finished the movie, people started talking about you know their grandparents or even within my family. They were like, there was a, a time that I assisted and started talking about it. And apparently, there is a big difference between you know actually seeing that kind of stuff and and the movie. So that's what this movie tried to do is to actually make like an authentic. Um, show of that. Yeah, I mean, it seems so real. Yeah. I, I think I, I freaked out the most in the scene that uh, the mom was like, oh, like, yeah, you know, like, she was recording. <laughs> and, yeah, when she... Uh, <laughs> would her character, like, twist all like that? No. Was that she, was really good. Was she... <laughs> but thank you, yeah. thank you. I'm a contortionist. Mm. Now, does she really... Can she really contort like that, or, or was it, you know, did they put that in No, she did, uh, she did all that on her own, and that was oh, the she first did? time... Oh, wow. Yeah, that was the first time I met her, too. Um, are you talking <sighs> about my... That scene that you just showed, or are you the talking first, about the, the first, first one? scene about the mom? Oh, the mom. Yeah, she did that on her. She own. did that. Yeah, and that was the and first like, time her I ever arm met her. And, oh. I didn't know. I didn't know she was going to do any of it. She you did it. Mm -hmm. So your reaction was genuine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I now, didn't have to act. Now, what about movie. you when you were in that scene? Did you actually do that? 
Um, well, no, we had a contortionist, but I did some. I, I, I did as you much grew up, as I could. You grew up a dancer, right? Yeah. Me yeah. too. Okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> now, we don't want to give away any spoilers, but there is a bit of controversy mm -hmm. over how the movie ends. Yeah. Uh, what's your take on it? Um, well, actually, the way that the movie ends is exactly the way that I read it, and I thought it was mm -hmm. one of the coolest parts. It's abrupt, and I thought it was one of the coolest parts of it because it gave gave me, the, you know, the room to make up, to talk about it, to think about it, to make up what I thought could have or would have happened. And yeah. I think that's kind of a treat at the end of a movie to not tell you exactly what what you should think. Or oh, so you're kind of giving it away, huh? <laughs> <laughs> now before you go, I, mean, I hear that you're a huge Dance Central I'm just kidding, you didn't give away anything. I hear you're a huge Dance Central fan, right? Yeah, I kind of got into it like uh, over the summer. My uh -huh. friend bought it and he was like, you're a dancer, try this. and. It's you, awesome. You're really good at it, but you don't have one your, yourself? I don't, because I didn't want to, you know, feed the habit. Well, I think you should feed the habit, and then once you get a little practice in, I think you should come back and we'll have a match. Well, I don't want to embarrass you, Candace. You might embarrass me, but I'm willing to take one for the team. All right, I'll take off my <laughs> shoes and I'll do it. Okay. Thank you so much to Fernanda Andrade. <laughs> What Chobot's doing at CES? Yeah. Well, the answer is coming up, but first, courtesy of Gamefly, Kevin hangs out with 50 Cent and some very cool headphones. Hey everybody, I'm here with international music phenomenon, serial entrepreneur, lover of water that's been infused with vitamins. That's right. 50 Cent, thank you for taking the time to chat, man. Oh, man, it's fun. It's always a ball, man. Coming so let's, let's talk the future of, of headphones. Let's talk SMSI. Right, yeah. What do we got here? Wireless sync, the clear technology, and it's a 16-bit lossless technology that allows you to go 50 feet away from the source of music. You can sync four headsets up to one single source of music. Take a step back, because when sometimes when you hear like, oh, it's got it's got clear sync in it, that sounds like huh? a badge that I'm trying to scrape off of a laptop and it's leaving a sticky residue. It sounds like a marketing thing. Right, right. But this is you're not going Bluetooth. This is no. this is the transmission technology that you're using, so you don't lose audio quality yeah, from well, the device to the headphones. Bluetooth is like the was originally created for telecommunications, so right. you lose sound quality immediately. The clear technology is it for this? A big issue while, while actually developing it for me was durability, so the product wouldn't just break every two seconds. So I had a know, split I made, second I made sure final destination vision of a piece of plastic <laughs> flying off into my eye. So thank you for knowing your product better than I do. That was, uh, that's impressive. We didn't even get to release date and price point for these guys. What are we looking at? But well, these are three ninety nine. Three ninety nine. Yeah. And then the wired option is? It's two ninety nine ninety five. Great. Friends and family discount? What are we talking? Oh, well, we'll work something out. You know, we can turn the camera, turn the camera. No, leave it running. I'm now concerned. What do we so, Vidi, I know a lot about you. I know a lot about your music. Um, I figured I would give you a chance, though, to learn about me. And uh, this is just a little something that I whipped up. I'm not really a, I want to call myself an artist. I don't want to put labels on what I am. If you okay. want to call me an artist, you call me an artist. But you tell me how my majesty sounds through your headphones. OK. OK, so here we go. Check this out. That's cl that's sounds more Portuguese than I know. That's the fire. That is the fire. This ain't gonna work, but it's cool. I mean, like I've heard worse material. I'll take it. Heard, can I put that? Can I put that on the cover of the single? I have. <laughs> I've heard far worse. Fifty cents. <laughs> SMS audio products are out now. More coming from the future. Fifty Cent, everybody. Thanks, man. First singles for you. Second and third are me. And then just leave the music out. Because you could go ahead and flash your, your your blue eyes at the girls. Give us a different demographic. You know what I mean? Done. I'll be I'll be your beeper. <laughs> And now, a hot chick catches a baseball. Coming up tomorrow on an all-new Attack of the Show.
sexy spy Yvonne Strahovski from Chuck will infiltrate our studio with her new film, Killer Elite. Then we investigate the self-proclaimed queen of vaginas on a very not safe for work who's who on YouTube. And find out what Grace Halbig tries to smuggle to Mark Wahlberg when they talk contraband. See it tomorrow. Hey, we're back! Kevin, what's up in Vegas, man? Hey, uh, Vegas is still here, believe it or not. I am still alive, and so is Jessica Chobot. She actually ran around the show floor. She checked out the latest Motorola droid and a refrigerator from the future. Ladies and gentlemen, we are gathered here today at CES 2012 to pay our respects to my iPad, my iPhone, my laptop, my flip cam, and all the other tech that I got for Christmas that is going to be outshined at this year's lineup. Later, losers. In my hands here is the Droid Razor Max. What makes this different from the Droid previous to this is this one has 20 plus hours of battery life. It's running on Android Gingerbread. It has a 4.3 inch Super AMOLED screen. As you can see, it's 8.9 millimeters thin and it only weighs 145 grams. It practically floats on air. It's got a 16 gigabyte internal memory, but you can expand it up to 32 gigabytes with the included SD memory card. It's got Front and rear facing cameras. There we go. Say hi! There has been no price point announced just yet, but it will be coming out in about three to four weeks, exclusive to Verizon. Here at CES, we show you phones, we show you laptops, but how often do we show you fridges? Check it out, the glass chiller here at LG. The glass chiller's claim to fame is this little sucker right here. Here, this little baby can actually take a 12 ounce can and chill it to a frosty deliciousness in just five minutes. Or it can also do two cans of eight, or if you wanna get fancy for your friends, it can do a bottle of wine in also eight minutes. How it works is it sucks air up from the freezer and actually has this little compartment which rocks it so that there's no ice crystals that form on your beverage. However, don't fret. If you put a soda in there, it's not gonna blow up your carbonated beverage so that it gets all over the place and is messy. And it can also hold up to 50 gallons of milk, which is infinite amounts of Code Red Mountain Dew. It's coming out this spring at $32.99. Something to think about when I come over and ask for a glass of wine. Oh, it feels so expensive. known as OLED, as your kids on the street like to call it. As you can see behind me, Samsung has its smart OLED TVs. Each of those super OLEDs in there basically has its own RGB, which means that there's no backlighting. It creates its own color spectrum within each little individual dial -load, which allows for a super, super thin TV. So this is more than just a super HD TV. This is a smart HD TV that has voice recognition. What that does is it allows you to come into the room, command your TV on and off, change the channel with your voice, volume with your voice. It's really, really cool. You can command your TV without ever having to touch the remote. Another thing it offers is facial recognition. What that means is, say your favorite show is, I don't know, Proving Ground with Jessica Chobot. What it does is you walk into the room, it has a built-in camera that scans your face and recognizes that you're sitting down and goes ahead and pulls up Proving Ground for you. Now, if that stuff wasn't cool enough, we're going minority report here, people. It also offers motion control. You can sit your butt on the couch, never have to move, and just wave your hands back and forth to scroll through channels, up volume, down volume, turn TV on. It is amazing. So there's no price point and availability hasn't been announced yet, but the future is very, very soon, I promise. You guys know and love it, the PS Vita here at CES. I got my mitts on one. OLED five inch screen, front and back touch pads, dual analog sticks. What's really cool, and they just announced it here at CES, it's going to run Netflix. Perfect for somebody that wants to travel and watch their movies on the go. Also, what's really cool is they've included apps now. One of my favorite here is Near. Basically, what it does is anytime you come in contact with somebody that also has a PS Vita walking around, it'll notify you that that person is there, and then you can go ahead and challenge them to games or whatnot, like, you can come, stalk me, and I will totally kick your ass. 
Coming out February 22nd, there's two versions available. There's a Wi-Fi version for $249 and a Wi-Fi 3G version for $299. my feet by newer, sexier technology. Goodbye, laptop. I'm sorry, but our brief fling is over. Wait, no, no. But we're... It's better this way. Yeah, TikTok, come back. I know your secret. When does CES end? CES? Yeah. Uh, I think it officially ends on Friday, but uh, for myself and the coverage that I'm doing here, we're waving goodbye today. We are done. Oh, I think nice. we uh, we showed you the best oh, of the best. Sadly. There is some cool stuff. I mean, <laughs> listen, you know, uh, from the digital experience on Monday, I don't know if you guys remember, I brought you that augmented reality application. That, to me, is the kind of thing that is really going to define the next three to five years mm -hmm. of technology. Because right now, yes, it's something on your phone, and it's going to be used for marketing and integration with bands and movie promotions. But in three to five years' time, we're already seeing really thin displays here, thin visors mm -hmm. that have screens in them. They're transparent. Imagine augmented reality from your glasses. That's where we'll be in just a few years. It's going to change the landscape. Also, the Lytro camera was really fun to use. It's, it feels good in the hands. It's nice to not have to worry about focusing. And the ability to change the focus later is something that's, that's really awesome. You never have to worry about tapping a screen or, oh, did I get that moment? You definitely captured it with that technology. It'll be nice when that's in cell phones. And I think we'll see that again in a couple years. And finally, you just saw Jessica Chobot talking about Samsung's super OLED TVs. They're gorgeous. They're razor thin. The picture on it looks amazing. The, the voice recognition is awesome. The, the motion recognition is awesome. And that is a common theme that we're seeing from cell phones, laptops, video game consoles, and now televisions. The ability to control them with your entire body. It's a great CES. I'm really excited for 2012 and can't wait to use all these products in my home. Thank you guys for indulging me. Of course. Thank you, Thank Kevin. You. <laughs> for stuff.